I suggested to Mr Ford that in the past he'd often been overwhelmed in the Star Wars films by the technology and in Indiana Jones by the action, and asked whether it was hard to make his own mark as an actor in that kind of picture. Well, I wasn't uh, out to... Uh, let, me, let me put it this way. If I'm overwhelmed by special effects, I think that, the f that that's a judgment that the film is out of control. I don't mean personally I overwhelmed, but if the human part of the story is lost or, or there is an emotional re relationship between the audience and characters in the film, you're missing something that, that, uh, that's very important in films. People don't go to films to watch special effects, finally. They go to have an emotional relationship, to see something human, to learn, to, to be able to, be, to exercise their, their emotions. Well, I, I think your fans find this, because I actually made a similar comment on television a week or two ago and got roundly insulted by a lot of people for my paints. Oh well, I, I, I don't take it. Uh, I don't take it personally. Um, um, but, but as I said before, I mean, you you operate in the context of what you're doing. Do you think from now on you'll do more films like this between Indiana Jones and the Star Wars movies? Well, I'm not uh, going to do another Star Wars film. That that's episode. That's a shame. In my life is concluded. Well, not considering what you just said about it. Uh, if I've been overwhelmed by special effects, no need to do that anymore. No, that's a, a chapter in the past, and uh, we're meant to do one more Indiana Jones film. I think that'll be enough. Um, it's always been my ambition to do different sorts of films, um, play different kinds of characters. It took you a long time, didn't it? I mean, overnight success in your case took about 15 years, isn't it? It was a long night. Yeah, it was a yeah. long night. Well, I always thought it would. In fact, I came when I was quite young to Hollywood. I didn't know very much about what I was doing. I had to learn. And I expected um, that it would take some time. I also saw that, uh, that those that stuck it out, simply by the process of attrition, finally got enough work to, to make a living. And my only ambition, really, was to have uh, regular work. I never really dreamed of being a, a movie star, as it were. I only hoped that I'd have regular work. Did you ever think at any time that it wasn't going to happen? Oh, uh, actually not. Uh, I mean, it probably sounds vain, but uh, since the ambition was so simple, I really didn't think that... Uh, I didn't think uh, that far in advance. I mean, I, at one point I stopped doing episodic television and became a carpenter in order that I didn't have to take the kinds of jobs that I thought led nowhere. And I held out for better parts and better movies rather than doing television. And in eight years I did three films, but they were American Graffiti and The Conversation. And, um, Oh, embarrassing. I've forgotten what the third one was. I can't think of the third one either. No. Um. But, uh, but after that period of time, uh, I became uh, known, characterized mm. by, by those experiences rather than what people had seen me do on television. So perception, the, the perception of me changed. And, um, and also I was more useful uh, after that period of time. I had I'd learned more about what I was doing and I'd grown a bit. Is it true that when you started acting, somebody told you you'd never be a star because you'd look too much like a bellboy? Uh, in fact, he said I acted too much like a bellboy. Ah. Here's the, the story in a nutshell is that, I, that my first uh, part has, had been a, a bellboy. Uh, my entire dialogue was Mr. Jones, paging Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, room 607, thank you very much. I was called into the office of an executive Columbia Pictures under, uh, to whom I was under contract and told that uh, I was told this story. The gentleman said, the first time Tony Curtis was ever in a film, you took one look at him and you, know, you knew that was a movie star. And I said, I thought you were supposed, in my case, to think that that was a bellboy. <laughs> And that was the that was the crux of the argument that we had. Um, our relationship uh, deteriorated <laughs> from that point on. I must say. How do you feel now when you're a superstar and you've been in some of the most successful pictures ever made? I get the feeling that you don't really enjoy that part of it. 
What I enjoy is, uh, is the ability uh, to pick and choose my projects. I enjoy the work process itself very much. Um, the rest of it um, is not uh, significant to me. Um, I don't enjoy being a celebrity. Uh, I enjoy being an actor. I like the work. I like the fact that I can work on a project for four or five months and then have the freedom that success has granted me to go away and do something else. Um, I, I've been very lucky. Peter Weir paid you rather a nice compliment. He said that you're one of the three or four people around at the moment who actually looked like a leading man. The camera likes you. Um, I, uh, I, I, well, I'm, I, I'm quite sure that I'm not, uh, that my appeal is not based on, uh, on a pretty face. There are a lot prettier faces around than, than I am. I think you're being a little over modest. You must be aware that there are women all over the world who like your face. Um, well, thanks, uh, thank you very much. <laughs>